There's three components of a salve, oil, herb, and beeswax. So the herbs are infused into the oil and the wax makes it into a salve. So more of a solid matter, okay? So, uh, so those are the three main ingredients. So to start, you have to figure out and do research as to what kind of herbs do you want to use? Do you need something for a skin rash? Do you need something for bug bites or poison ivy? I mean, you can use anything. You know, you have to research as to what you need to use it for. So then once you figure that out, in, in the back of your pamphlet, there's just some general um, uh, herbs that are used for burns, for bug bites, for uh, skin irritation. Um, one of the things is calendula. So mm -hmm. I have calendula here, it's dried. I have hops. Hops is actually to firm up your skin, so maybe mm -hmm. cosmetic. Um, here is I have white cedar that I have dried, and uh, what else do I have? Dandelions. Dandelions are a good pain reliever, anti-inflammatory, anti-itch. So you do not have to use just one herb; you can combine different herbs together. So they, you know, something that complements each other. Maybe you want a lavender and a calendula, or maybe you, it all depends on what you want. There's so much research out there. I mean, you can do anything. So once you decide what kind of herb you want to use for whatever ailment you're trying to cure or get your itch, <laughs> uh, then, comes the infusion and the oil. So generally, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, is a good way to start. Um, it's healthy for you, it's good for your skin. Um, generally, it's a good all around oil. It's not too expensive. Um, if you wanna do some sort of cosmetic, like say maybe for your face, you could use olive oil, but Almond oil is better. It's, it's a little bit lighter. It's better for more sensitive skin, um, better for your face, which is more sensitive. So once you decide those things, then comes the infusion part. So there's a three, couple steps of the sap, deciding what kind of herb you want for whatever use. And then the second, what kind of oil would you like? You can also combine oils. You can do coconut oil, you can do jojoba oil, you can do um, whatever. Walnut oil. Yeah, you could do walnut. I've never heard anybody, anybody use walnut oil. Avocado. Avocado oil. Yeah, in Georgia they have pecan oil too. Yeah, very light. Yeah. So what you would want to look up is a, a carrier oil or the carrier oil. They're all good carriers. It's the infusion method that. Avocado and olive oil tend to have the better, more stable shelf life before they go um, without going rancid with the herbs is why they're used the most. Right, yeah, avocado oil has like a one to two year shelf life after you, infused, you know, infused your, your oil. Um, so, can you combine herbs? Yes. Can you combine oils? Yes. Um, coconut oil is very good for your skin. Um, all those things. So, if we've decided what it is that you want to do, so let's say I want to do a hops. So you can, 
You can make salves out of dried herbs or fresh herbs. I recommend if you're just starting out to do dried herbs. It's a little bit easier. So what you do is you get a mason jar. You probably don't want to make a whole bunch. And you get your herbs. Did you see this? <laughs> I think you did. Anyways, try a different job. Anyways, you you put your whatever container you use, you put your herb in there. You don't want to fill it all the way up to the top. You want to keep it about halfway, maybe two-thirds full, and then fill it with whatever oil you decide to use. You want to make sure you cover your herbs completely, and the reason you don't fill it to the top with the herbs is because they will expand in the oil, okay? And then you seal it up. <coughs> And there are several different ways to infuse oil. One is the way I just described it. You can put it in a shelf in a dark place and leave it for two to three weeks. It's infused. Uh, you can also blend or grind up your herbs. Okay, when you blend and grind up your herbs, <coughs> excuse me. Um, there is more of it to get saturated and more, more of the antioxidants and stuff to bleach out into the oil. The other method is, and here's, here's one that I did with Dan. This is a dandelion. Oh, you like, you like to, you didn't get it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's a dandelion one that I did. Um, once you've well, let me, let me cover the other infusions. Um, the other way to infuse is to put oil in your herbs in a double boiler and let it cook for 60 minutes, something like that. The heat will also bring out all the essentials. You could do it in the oven. You could do it in the crock pot, whatever you prefer. This is the easiest way, but if you need something in a hurry, then you would go to the heated method, okay? Um, I have acquired what's called an infuser, and I love this thing. If you guys want to make something in a hurry, you're more than welcome to come over here and use this. So you would put your oil of choice in here, along with your herbs, okay? You put the top on. This actually grinds your herbs which makes it a more potent extraction. Did you do that? They just gave up. <laughs> the nice thing about this is it has a timer. Um, you can select the temperature and it keeps the temperature steady. You're not, you know, looking in your pot to make sure it's not, you know, boiling and getting too hot to where, you know, it breaks stuff down. I like this. It's kind of noisy, but where would you get something like that? Where else but Amazon? No, but I mean, you know, if you guys need to do something, you're welcome to call me, and you know, we can just. It takes about a half an hour, as opposed to an hour, an hour in the oven, or you know, the crock pot. You want to make sure you do it on low at all times. Have you ever used a vacuum sealer before? Yes. You mean for the oil? Yeah, you just mix them together um, and suck all the air Yeah, out. you could. Mm -hmm. Definitely could. My brother-in-law does that with different things. Like with the marinade? With this, like, no, he's got a big vacuum sealer. So you put stuff in there and it, um, he, he, you can make pickles in 15 minutes because it forces... Right. Um, I have well, one of those. It, it sucks all the air out of the, right. the pickle and then all the vinegar shoots in. And you can do the same thing with infusions then. Because as the vacuum increases right. its pressure, it pulls yeah. all the air out of whatever was dry, and then the oil infuses in there more quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And then is it ready right away? 
I don't know how quickly that will be no, ready. No, I think you so want to wait. wait. Yeah. You know, you really want to wait so that you can get all the okay. stuff out of, you know, whatever, whether it's bark or whether it's, you know, you're trying to extract the resins or, or what. Why do you know if your mix of mold potion like you're talking about? Yeah. Does it seem to last as long as if you didn't or just fade away quickly? You mean the, the medicinal potion. qualities? Yeah. No, it's just stronger. Oh. Yeah, that's all it is. It's just stronger. You're increasing surface area from which you can extract things. Mm -hmm. Do you have to strain it then after that? Yeah, get into that. So once you <laughs> Once you've infused, whether you do it this way, whether you do it in the stove, in the Where oven. Where's the bee wax? What? Where's the bee wax coming from? I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Okay. So once you've infused your oil, whether you do it this way or all the other ways, you have to extract the herb from the oil. Otherwise, you'll have won't be sad, you know, yeah. you'll <laughs> smear something on, all of a sudden you'll have a flower on there. <laughs> um, so you extract that. Um, you can do it just in a strainer. You can um, put a cloth in here, pour your uh, infused herbs in there, cover it up, and then drain it out. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's one way. Or, you know, you can put it in a sieve and, um, you know, fold up the corners and, and just keep squeezing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I did this one yesterday. It's white cedar and calendula. And uh, once it sits, there's sediment on the bottom. So it really doesn't hurt or add anything except there's a little sediment in your sap which if that bothers you you know you can put this through a coffee filter and refilter it I don't because the coffee filter absorbs so much oil and it's you know it's not cheap so I did um, olive olive oil and I did almond oil and I'll pass it around and you can definitely smell the cedar so what do you use that for um, skin irritations. Yeah, I mean, not open wounds. No, yeah. no. <laughs> so the calendula, let me see. Um, what's that called? It's like for swelling, for sunburn, for eczema. Um, skin, uh, yeah. White cedar is like an antimicrobial, so it, it's good stuff. What is calendula? It's a flower. I've never heard of it. Have you heard of calendula? Who? <laughs> you should grow it. Can you grow it? No, I did not. I grow it. I grew it this year. Did you? Mm -hmm. Successfully. <laughs> orange. My orange. Smells like cedar. What did you say the cedar was good for? Uh, I think it's on there. Yeah, put it on there. Depending on the oil you use, it makes a very nice wooden polish, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depending on how much wax you put in. Yeah. What did you say? Depending on what kind of oil you use, it makes a really nice furniture polish. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So here's the, here's the white cedar that I have collected, and then I dried it. I mean, that smells really, really strong. Smelling it, that's, that's no, that's <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. 
Some jewel weed. Um, that's also an anti inflammatory, antifungal. Uh, it's a remedy for poison ivy, bug bites, fungal infections, um, nettle, you know, hit. Poison ivy, especially? Yeah. So it does work on the nettle. <laughs> I was doing some weeding and I, and I went in to grab something and I was like, oh. and it, it got me right here and I ran in. And I hadn't made the salve, but I made the oil. And it really does take the sting away. It doesn't last for, you know, like forever. And you have to reapply it. I don't know. How long do I wait? Two hours? An hour? Yeah. But at least it takes some oil. But they say a jewelry will always grow where there's poison ivy around somewhere. Right. And it, 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 stain, it stains your hands orange. So once you've um, made your extraction, then you can either bottle it and save it for another day to make the salve. Um, I do recommend if you do do it to either bottle it in a dark glass jar or if you just do a regular jar keep it in a dark place okay um, and the other thing if you're doing fresh herbs um, when you, they have more moisture in it so when you go to bottle a lot of times there's moisture in your extraction so what you want to do is you want to take like a cheesecloth or a coffee filter and put it on top and that way if there's condensation that comes up the um, uh, coffee filter or the um, cheesecloth will take that away because otherwise if you if you get you know like water liquid in your salve or in your oil it can go rancid a lot yeah, quicker yeah. and the other thing is you know say you you have this in your shelf or or in your cupboard um before you start making salve and if you've had it in there for a while always smell your oil first mm -hmm. yeah. you know make sure it still smells sweet and like it's supposed to smell not you know, if it's slightly foul or whatever, toss it. So, all right. And then comes the actual salve making part. So there's all these steps. And finally, we get to the point where you heat up your oil, you add your beeswax, which makes it into a salve, which changes the consistency of the oil so that it becomes spreadable. Um, the formula, there's different formulas and, and you have to kind of play with it. So it's like a quarter of a cup, a quarter of a cup, a quarter of a cup to a cup of infused oil, okay? Um, so you want to heat up your oil, measure your beeswax. So I have bricks of beeswax if you guys want to start making salve, I have plenty of it. You grate it, you measure it, and you put it in your oil and you stir it. Once it's incorporated, then you put it into your jars and it will solidify. Now, if by chance you put in, you like your salve, oh, that's a cat, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a little pod coming yeah, out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're a little anxious to come out of it. Um, so depending on how creamy you want your salve or, or not is the amount of wax you put in. So if you put more wax in, you'll get a lip balm. You know, lip balms are more waxy. Salves are more creamy. They melt more into your skin. 
I so, have a controversial question. Yes. Marijuana buds would work on this too to make a sure marijuana. Do. Yeah, that oh wow. Yep. Wow. That's actually what that's for. What the, buds for? The infusion. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. I, my mother literally when Oregon became legal, she got some and she couldn't believe that worked on her joints. Yep. I use it all the time. Absolutely. I have to be honest with you. I don't eat it. Should be a happy nation for me. I can't be I'll get um, the recipe later. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I've heated my oil. There's two cups of oil in here, infused. I did the cedar calendula. Um, Do it in a double boiler. Um, I sometimes cheat and don't do it like that. <laughs> How do you cheat? I just put it on the put it on gas burner. Really but you have to be careful because if you start smoking, yeah. it's done. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, getting natural honey and then nuking it. Yeah. You know, it's like, well. You just destroyed the. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, this goes fast and it melts quick. Um, you can test it. You can put it on a plate that you had in the freezer, similar to jam, to see if it sets up. And you can you know, use your finger and see how well it absorbs into your skin. Um, the other thing is if you don't like the consistency of a batch that you make, it's not a problem. You just reheat it. If it's too solid, you put in more oil. If it's, you know, not solid enough, you heat it up and you put in more wax. So, it's an easy fix. Very easy fix. And then these little containers, they're great in your purse. Um, you should, you know, they say to use the dark glass to prevent it from spoiling, but I mean, you know, if you carry purse. around, you know, like a quart jar in your purse, well, then, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah. Well, plus that, that'll be in the bottom of your purse, you start with Yeah, exactly, I kind of figured that. And then, you know, you can get these at Walmart for I think 90 cents for two, they work great. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually add essential oils. You can add drops of, say, vitamin E. Um, the calendula doesn't have that much of a smell. You could add lemongrass. You could add, I mean, you know, your mind can be as creative as you want it to be. But, you know, do your research as far as what herbs to use, what, you know, what you want them for. Do you want, you know, something to relax you? Use lavender or incorporate, you know, lavender in a concoction. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> like with the lavender, do you use the flowers? Or yes. The, the yes. Yeah. The flowers. Yeah. You can use the leaves too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can, you can even use the stems if you want, because you're, you know, you're just infusing the oil and then extracting it out. And so, um, obviously, if I were to put these dry dandelions in a food processor and grind them up, I'm going to get more dandelions in a small jar like this, as opposed to this. So therefore, this is going to be stronger, okay? Because you have you have more of the herb in the oil, so it's infusing. There's more product infusing into the oil. Yeah. Have you ever heard of any uh, negative issue of mixing up, let's say, herbs and essential oil? You know, some potent I'm sure they're out there. I haven't heard of any. But is there some of those you don't put um, the peppermint oil with the calendula? Not that, I, not that I know of. Okay. Lemon oil will burn your skin. Yeah. I think that yeah. your caution um, comes <clears throat> from essential oil usage and really the rules. So. There are certain essential oils 
for instance, oregano, which you want to be very, very careful with on your skin. And so anything that is going to be a skin irritant is not something you want to use very much of or at all in a sap. Yeah, you always want to do your own research also, just in case you have your own allergies, like, you know, sulfur or, you know, just people have a lot of different allergies. Mm -hmm. um, so we can put like some vitamin E in here if you want. I don't know, you can be your own witch on <laughs> vitamin E just to add is not only is it nice to add as an additional oil, it actually extends the life of right. the sap because yes, it's it a natural preservative. Right. Mm -hmm. Um gosh, it's not too many. Where do you find the arnica flowers? What? Go ahead. What did you say? I said, where would you find arnica flowers? You can buy them at Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. 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 Kathy says she has arnica. Do you? I have, um, I don't have one on camera. Okay. 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 Okay.
getting information. No, it was between the amending of the Oh, you want to take the knee? Like, do all the. Oh, you have, you have the lid on it? <laughs> you have the lid on it? <laughs> oh, looks like it's I mean, you can already see it setting up. Yeah. On top of the lid. On top of the lid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on top of the lid. It's setting up. Sorry, guys. What flavor is that? Is that that is cedar um, calendula. Yeah. Is that the eczema? Yes. Mm -hmm. I might not have been listening, but did you ask her if she was eating that? Yeah. Do you wager your beehives? Well, you can try. There's some people that I can read. You'll get your own one. I want to smell it. There's some people that I've heard of that are trying to breed their bees so they have hardy ones in Minnesota. Good. Good luck. Yeah. I have to say. The thing is, is if you try to winter them, it gets so cold up here, you have to have. Well, this is the beekeeper. This is who I got my knowledge from, is Kathy. I got my, all my bee knowledge from you. Um, yeah, it was a lot. Um, you know, if you try to winter them, it gets so cold, then they die, they don't have enough food, then they're too warm, then they eat too much, then they starve, then the mites come in, then you have to fumigate out of no. Didn't we hear that 30% can usually make it through? I know my landlord can. I don't know, maybe. Uh, that's the old bartender thing. Yeah, so if you guys need like beeswax or something, <laughs> so what I do is I you know, make these cubes. I'll, I'm sure they'll say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, you know, also different containers you can get and you can order and you can spend a bunch of money on stuff that, you know, you can Looks order. pretty for Christmas, but do you really need it? But then you can reuse it. Provided yeah. you get them back. <laughs> you, you were mentioning hops earlier. Yes. I have collected the wild hops. Yeah. The so long, long little gravel roads before, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, so really a powerful fragrance. Yeah. What's that, Andy? That's hot. Oh, oh packs. How long have you been doing your own salads and oils? For a while. I don't even know. I like that because I do yours. Yeah, sorry. More than a year. More, yeah. A Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, so like I have that cascade, the centennials, the nugget. I planted some of the wrong stuff and it, it died because it was just it was a summer variety. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it was like, like <laughs> but the hops came out better. Yeah. 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 No, I have oh. no. No, I'm alright. Okay. Oh, look at you. Yeah, all the different varieties. They're amazing. I look forward to learning more about Stay a little bit. What is your name? Thank you. Pardon me? What is your last name, Julie? Prosser. You remember, okay. we've met a couple of times. Um, at your place and at the spring show. No, you know, a lot of people. Have you, uh, are you an herbalist? Like, just home, or do you do it kind of semi-professionally? Okay. How do we get a hold of you? <laughs> They'll prescribe you a salve that will cure one thing and make Five other things go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't had much luck with doctors. I think we say that they take away symptoms. Yeah, that's why it's called practicing medicine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like the, you know, oh, take this to cure blah, 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 but side effects are, you know, forget that. I'd rather deal with my eczema rather than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the business. Yeah. What is that white scene? It's on your thing. It's a white Um, blemishes, acne, um, irritations. Yeah, it has a lot of things. If you look it up too, um, the calendula is for eczema. So before I started mixing them, I did the actual white cedar salve first. And I had a friend in California who had very bad eczema. I mean, psoriasis. really, really bad. Eczema yeah. or psoriasis? You know what? She had like a little bomb to swim. Could have been yeah. psoriasis. Anyways, um, and she said, God, Ange, nothing works, blah, 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 blah. Happened to have a little thing. And I, I said to her, I said, Don, I go, try this. It can't hurt, you know. I mean, it'll moisturize, but it can't hurt you. No side effects. So I came back to Minnesota, and a couple of weeks later, she's like, you have to make me some. It, it cleared up her symptoms. It is. It, it, it was. Right? Insane. I mean, you know, just like anything, it works for one this person, one. it doesn't work for another person. More. You know? Maybe it's a mind thing, maybe it's, I mean, you know, medicine had to start somewhere, you know, and it started with birds. It had to start somewhere. And I just think going back to holistic God's gifts. Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't work, you know, you can always go get your prednisone or whatever, you know, crap that is, you know. Sorry, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. So, um, maybe next time we can cover uh, tinctures, which kind of are the same thing, only you can ingest them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They're made with, you know, vinegar, um, you they can no be alcohol. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know. If you've eaten a shoe, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's basically it. But, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Can I put your picture in the paper?
No. <laughs> no. Yes. Am I putting them in the paper? <laughs> no, but I am. Well, that's your choice.